Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome to the Unlocking Excellence podcast with your main man, Coach Eric Schwefel. What is up? What is up? What is up? So check it out. If this is your first time here, I am so grateful that you are here joining us today. I got a great show set up for you. All right. Today is going to be about the importance of meeting yourself where you are at, right? Whenever you're trying to achieve goals, whenever you want to create a vision for your life, whatever it might be, it is so important to be able to meet yourself where you're at in order to figure out where you're going and how long it's going to take to get there, okay? So with that being said, if you enjoy this, please, 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 the only thing that I like or I ask for you to do is to like this, to share it. If you're about it, subscribe to this podcast and I'll keep having great information like this coming out so that you can unlock excellence every single day in your own life. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. Let's talk about meeting yourself where you're at, okay? So to give you some background, right? I have been coaching now for, man, something like 10 years, something like that, maybe a little bit more than that. I've been working out since I was about 16 years old. So I've been working about working out about 14, 15 years. I've been coaching for about, I would say probably 10 to 12 years, somewhere in that time frame. And what I've noticed is that the most successful people don't just dive into something, right? Now, what I mean by that is they don't just go head first, say, hey, you know what? I want to go and jump off of a cliff. I'm going to jump off this cliff. They don't, they don't, they check to see how high the cliff is, how deep the water is underneath. They take a calculated risk. And that's what we're going to talk more about today, okay? So especially during these times, and I say this because we're amid the COVID and the corona pandemic, there are a lot of things that are uncertain. There are a lot of things that people are just very opinionated about. There are things that many people are polarized about, and there are so many things that people are uncertain about. There are videos that come out that say one thing, and they're supposed to be from this credible source that we're all supposed to trust and we're not supposed to question. And then all of a sudden, you have another video that comes out from the exact type of person and they're saying something completely the opposite. Then what happens is there's a division that takes place saying this group of people is correct. Look at their credentials. And then you have another group that says these people are correct. Look at their credentials. And nobody knows where to be. Nobody knows where to settle. Nobody knows what opinion to have. They don't know who to believe. So with that, people's foundations are shaken. Because for so long, they've relied upon the opinions, the perspectives, the interpretations, the facts, whatever you want, however you want to describe it. They've relied upon other people for so long to give them the answers to the questions they have, and they've waited for so long for other people to tell them what to do that now they can't trust the people who normally tell them what to do, therefore meaning they don't know what to do. And if you want to get on a real deeper level, it even brings into question if you can trust yourself because... If the person that you believe to give you information for all this time, the person that you trusted for so long is now coming into question and you are questioning that, then you're questioning your, you're questioning your ability to trust yourself and who you believe. Maybe it's not conscious, maybe it's subconscious, but it's there. And that rattles people to the core because now what's real and what's not. If this person who has these accreditations, who I was taught and conditioned to believe, don't tell me the things that are true, then what can I believe to be true? Who can I trust to be true? And this is the interesting part that where, where this boils down, right? If you, if we can't believe the people that we have in authority, that means 
that we then have to go to another source, correct, right? Well, who is that source? What is that source? Now, ultimately, right, my spiritual side wants to come out and wants to say God is that source. Rely on God completely. Now, I know that message doesn't go out to everybody. So I want to say it right off the bat. For those who it does go out to, pray to God. Find whatever your source is and rely upon that source, right? For me, it's God. Now, for those who say, all right, Eric, I get it but it's not working, try harder, go harder into it, right? Really dive into that spirituality, that prayer, that meditation, that journaling. What is that going to do though? Okay. What is that going to do? Now, this is for those that aren't about the spiritual aspect of things. Okay. That, that aren't into that, the metaphysical and the thinking and the woo woo. This is what it's, this is where it ultimately leads to. You get to do the research yourself. You get to figure out for yourself what the true answers are. Therefore, When you do the research, you get to determine how far you go into this research. You get to see how, for lack of better words, how, actually, no, not for lack lack of better words, I found a good word, how unaware you were of how things in the world were run and how they were and how they operate and how you saw and how the perceptions and all that begins to change. Now, the person that you can rely upon instead of an expert with a certain opinion, and then there's another expert that has the same credentials, but has another opinion. Then instead of relying upon them, you can start relying upon what you see, right? You can start relying, there we go, relying upon your own research and what you've come to find out. Therefore, you've seen the research, you've seen the evidence, You've come to, you've created a hypothesis, you've come to a conclusion, and when that opinion or when those beliefs that you gathered are challenged, then what you can do is you can go and do the research and you can find that information and you can change your beliefs because then you have seen the evidence and you've seen the facts if you choose to change it. Now, This probably sounds like I went on like a little rant about what's happening in some one way I did. But ultimately, this is the same exact things that happens in your health and your fitness and any other piece of your world. Having been a coach for as many years as I've had, I've had the opportunity and I've I've gotten the opportunity to work with hundreds of people. I would even border to say thousands of people now over the years, of course, right? And as I said in the beginning, what I've noticed is those that who have, be, those who are the most successful don't just dive into something. They take calculated risk. And sometimes it might seem like those people are being hesitant. It might seem like those people are scared, that they're nervous, that they're anxious. However, what's really going on is they are calculating how to take the risk and what's going to be necessary in order to get the reward that they want. Interesting, right? So why do I tell you all of this? In order to unlock excellent, oh my gosh, I can't speak today, y'all. In order to unlock excellence in your life, one of the things that needs to happen is to meet yourself where you're at. Not to be told by other people where you're at. Not to listen to other people, but to figure out exactly where you are. Okay, now let's dive a little bit deeper into that. And I'm going to guide you through the process that I do with my clients, right? So my, my clients, they come to me in order to lose weight, in order to clear the mental clutter, in order to relieve stress, in order to live and become the best version of themselves, right? Live the best version of the life of their life that they can. And my scope of training and my way of training is not the cookie cutter here. Let's just give you something. Let's throw spaghetti on the wall and let's see if it sticks. We figure out how to implement habits into your life that are going to be effective, okay? 
So let's give an example. Let's say that you haven't worked out in years. You go to a trainer and they tell you to start working out five times a week. Shit doesn't work like that. What's going to happen is maybe for the first two or three weeks, you'll get it down. It will be great. Then you'll start to notice a lot of soreness. Then that's going to be playing a factor because you haven't been sore in years. You don't like that feeling. Then what's going to happen right after that, it's going to end up becoming a chore because it's something that's so out of the way. You haven't dedicated as much time to it in the past, right? So it's so out of the way that it's not something that's maintainable. It's not something that's able to excuse me, to happen long term. So what does that mean? That means that you fall back into your old habits, into your old ways of doing things, you get the old results that you've had in your life before. So with that being said, how do we fix it? With my clients, we look at what they're doing on the daily. What is their morning routine? What are they eating? What are they doing midday? What are they doing mid afternoon in the evening? When would be the best time to work out? Is it morning or evening? Why? Is that long-term? Is that sustainable? Are you going to be able to do that? Are you willing to do that? Those are some of the questions that we end up asking to figure out what works best. Hey, this one hour workout three times a week isn't working. Can we make it 20 minutes a day for three days, four days a week? Absolutely. And here's the thing is that you Me, we change on the daily. We are not the same person that we were even yesterday. So meeting yourself where you're at is all too important. You may be tired. You may be worn out. You may be drained. Maybe there's an energy vampire in your life and they're sucking all the freaking energy out of you. You don't even see it because you want to be a good person and you're trying to help them out and you're trying to be a listener and you're trying to be the person that you would want them to be for you which is great. I implore that. I I applaud that. There we go. I applaud that. However, if you're dying, right? If you're freaking dragging your feet and you don't feel as the confident motherfucker that I know you are, then we need to fix that shit up. We need to get you to a place where you feel a hundred percent, where you're operating at a hundred percent, you're clear minded and you're driven right? Now, Eric, it's, I'm going through a divorce or I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I'm going through this. This is perfect. And what I mean by that is you're growing in your awareness of what you're experiencing. You're realizing how much energy this takes place and where your attention is. Knowing where your attention is allows you to direct your attention to where you want it to go. So that's why I find it all too important to really lay out the foundation of who you are, where you're at, and what you're doing before starting anything. That way, we know what's important to you now. We know what actions you're taking, what steps, and we know what direction you're headed in right now. Why? Because when we meet you where you're at, we set realistic expectations, we set guidelines, and we set back. We realize the guidelines and the boundaries that you have in place. We realize how much effort and how much energy we can actually direct into eliciting and evoking the change, maybe not evoking is the right word, but eliciting the change that you want to see and that you want to bring about, okay? If you're making $60,000 a year and you want to bump that up to $200,000 a year, we've got to know the habits and we've got to really clarify the habits that you have right now are not going to bring about that $200,000, that $140,000 change. Better yet, right, since we talk a lot about fitness and losing weight, if you're at 300 pounds right now, and you want to drop to 175, so you want to drop half your body weight, we've got to really clarify, build a foundation, make it as clear as fucking day, That what you're doing at 300 pounds is not acceptable if you want to go to 175. 
And with that, it's not that we have to guilt or shame or anything like that. We've just got to make abundantly clear that we've got to change the way that we're doing things, which means we've got to change the way that we're being, that we're operating, that we're showing up. We've got to change the way that we think. We've got to change the way that we feel. Okay. So once we've really clarified where we're at, what we're doing, who we are, all that good stuff about the current reality of things, about the present reality of things, then what we can do is we can start to look at what it would be like and who would you be in the future. I say we start, start with three years. I'm actually going through this right now with one of my coaches. Start with three years because that's enough time to really believe that the changes can take place. Then start listing what it is that you want to do. Who is it that you want to become? What does that person look like? What are they doing? What kind of job do they have? How is your family life different? How is your family different? Look, go through one of the past podcasts on the different areas of health. We have your physical, you have your mental, you have your emotional, you have your spiritual, you have your environmental, you have your social, you have your financial. Sorry if I'm listing a couple of these twice. You have several different, you have your spiritual. I think I listed that one. Um, you have several different areas in your health of your health and you can write a vision for what that would be like in three years. Imagine having a purpose where you really dive in and you say in three years, I'm going to be married with kids. I'm going to be making so much money. I'm going to have this amount of weight. I'm going to have these type of friends. I'm going to feel this type of way. And I'm going to do everything in my power in order to get me to that place. Do you have any idea how motivating that would be? How good that would feel? Looking at that thing once a week saying, Ooh, I'm going to make it, baby. I'm going to, I'm going to make it to this fucking vision. I'm going to make this shit happen. Can you believe how inspired you would be to see your own words every single day? Can you imagine what that would be like? Ooh, boy, this shit would feel good. That shit would feel so good. And when you start to do this with yourself, when you start to meet yourself where you're at, there's non-judgment that starts to develop. There's self-acceptance. There's honesty. There's integrity that starts to develop. There's love. There's humility. There's some sorrow and that suffering that takes place because you realize how you've been doing things for so long and you're like, I don't want to do things that way no more. I don't want this shit no more. That's the way it develops. That's the way it starts. So you begin to peel back the onion and you get to really experience the core of yourself. How amazing is that? You get to really experience yourself on a whole nother level because you're learning more and more of who you are now while simultaneously, simultaneously, you know what I mean? While simultaneously developing and creating the person that you want to be. This is where surrender comes in. This is where letting go comes in. This is where changing your environment comes in. This is where surrounding yourself with new people comes in. This is where all that takes place. Meet yourself where you're at so that you can figure out where you're going. No judgment. This is where I'm at. This is what's happening. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. You don't have to hate it. It's fine the way that it is. Everything's cool, right? Everything's cool the way that it is. Then you can start to build. And this is the deep part. Here's a little bit of a bonus for you. When you start to do that for yourself, you start to have more compassion with others. You start to see 
and, and experience what it is to give somebody grace, well, you start to, to really be more patient, I would say. And then one of the other things too, is you start to see other people's patterns, why they do things the way that they do things, that maybe it is that their eyes and their mind are still clouded by certain beliefs that no longer serve them. And at one point, they no longer served you. But you were able to break free from that. You were able to see things in a different light, in a different perspective and interpretation. Now, here's the big part. That doesn't mean that you need to help them. What? Eric, you're all about helping people. I know. That doesn't mean that you need to go out of your own way to help them. Believe me when I say meeting somebody in their shit and expecting them to get out of their shit just because you meet them there and you're willing to help doesn't mean that they're going to help themselves. It just doesn't. One of the first ways you can avoid getting your energy drained by somebody who's unwilling to help themselves is by asking them, hey, if I listen to you, if I'm willing to help you out, are you willing to get out of this shit in whatever variation that matters? Are you willing to have a better attitude? Are you willing to see things differently? Are you willing to do X, Y, and Z if I show up and I listen and I help you? That way you bypass all the BS that takes place from listening and them finding an objection for every solution that you discover. Some people just don't want to be helped, man. Some people just like being miserable. Some people just like staying in their shit because they love to complain. Y'all, I have actively made it a, what's the right word? A task of mine to watch the amount that I complain, right? It's been, it's a task and I encourage you to do it. Try 24 to go 24 hours without complaining. And one of the things that I learned when I do this, because believe me, it's not every day. (laughs) One of the things that I've learned is you really discover where people's focus and attention is. Because when you start, when you stop complaining, right, when you start to notice and when, when you're complaining, you stop it, you start to see where other people do it too, because your awareness is there. Man, do that for yourself. Trust me, do that for yourself. Most of people's conversations are negativity and most of people's conversations are venting and complaining. So that begs me to ask the question, where are you at in your life? Are you happy with how things are going? Let's really take a deeper look. What's it like in your relationships? What's it like with your health? Are you eating as well as you need to? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you focusing on the things that you can control or are you focusing on the things that you can't control? And we'll come to find out the more the people, the The more unhappy people are, the more they focus, the more likely they are to focus on the things that they can't control. And the happier somebody is, the more likely they are currently focusing on what they can't control and the more likely they are living in their present reality. So with that being said, I love you. I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you found this valuable. Y'all, if you did find it valuable, please feel free to let me know. If you have any questions, you can email me at schwefelstrength.com. Be sure to find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. We're all over the place. If you need any help getting results, be sure to let me know. Matter of fact, I want to do a client highlight of the week today. My client highlight of the week is for Susan Yaoman. I hope I pronounced it right, Susan. We started working together about 24 days ago. She is down 60 pounds. 60 pounds in 24 days. Incredible. Something like 
46 inches total. We had, we, we measure the right side of the body and she was like 23 inches, 23 and a half inches down total. So something like 46 inches down, something like 60 pounds, probably a little bit more now. And it's been a short amount of time that we've been working together. She has transformed her entire way of thinking. She's read freaking like outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill, the power of the subconscious mind. She's onto the untethered soul right now. She's read Chop Wood, Carry Water, a few other books too. She is just killing the game. So Susan, this is a shout out to you. High five. Awesome job. Keep killing it. Stay motivated. You are unstoppable. And if you want to know a little bit more about Susan's story, feel free to reach out to her and ask her. It will be up on my social media here in the next couple of weeks. You'll be able to see a little bit of it, her experience. And um, if you want to experience that for yourself, be sure to let me know and we can get you on track. All right. So with that being said, I love you. If you haven't already and you listen this far, hit that subscribe button so that you know the next time this is coming out, you can see the new episode. Share it out. I love you. You have a great day. We'll talk soon. You're unstoppable. Peace.